question here, Amrita. All right, you Hi. have six minutes. Hi, I'm Alina, and here's Anastasia. We work at Violi, and we're improving indoor air quality by making fresh air. Well, we all know the problem of the global air pollution, especially in the big cities such as New York. But, oops, sorry. You will hold, okay. Yeah, it's fair especially in the big cities such as New York. But we actually spend over 90% of our time indoors and we have a false feeling of safety inside because we can't see the pollutants. But think about the time when you are in conference room or working all day and you're feeling tired, can't focus, and maybe have a headache. It may not be the air, it might not be the work that's making you sick, but the actual air that you breathe. You know, we exhale carbon dioxide and over time those levels become elevated so elevated in fact that we typically have three times the concentrations than outside. From 405 parts per million outside, it can reach 1,500 and up to 3,000 parts per million. As an example, think of air on the plane. It typically averages about 1,500. And a recent Harvard study has shown that at these levels, we have 50% decline in cognitive performance, which means difficulty making decisions, ability to focus, performance. So we actually measured, we actually measured the CO2 in this room. And, and it's 950 parts per million right yes. now. And you may think, we have ventilation systems. Shouldn't they take care of that, right? Not quite. Most of them just recirculate the same air, taking minimum from outside because it takes a lot of energy to heat it, clean it, and cool it. And still, the only way <coughs> to get fresh air is from outside. So Anastasia and I, we worked together at Stanford Bioengineering for nine years combined at Clean Room, making microfluidic devices. And we saw an opportunity for this technology to address this problem. We've created we have technical difficulties. Being a little grumpy? Yes. So the solution that we see, we've created a system that makes fresh air indoors. And at Art Violi, we make a fundamental change in the way we think about quality air. Our system provides fresh air inside where we need it. And the system itself is microfluidic high-density photobioreactor. At a high level, it contains three parts. As LED lights that acts like sun, we have biochips that do the conversion and art cover. In our case, we have just art, but it could be touch screen, smart board, or any type of uh, cover. Let's dive deeper in the technology. Bioreactor is based in the process. We all learn in biology class, photosynthesis. That's where plants and trees absorb CO2 and convert it to oxygen. Our biochips have photosynthetic algae, chlorella, that's similar to trees absorb CO2 and produce oxygen. Only in our case, these algae are much more efficient, so they make a lot more fresh air. We inoculate algae into the chip. And then powering with LEDs and energy, we control the environment and stimulate the process for growth. So, and here we have our demo unit. It's a scaled down version of our system. It easily plugs into a wall in the outlet and mounts on the wall in a home, office, or school. And it's self-sustained system. It automatically adjusts on CO2 levels in the room. The higher the levels, the better the system will work. And because it's closed, self-sustained, it's easily replaceable cartridges, very similar to air filters, three, four times a year, to replenish the nutrients and remove the waste. So how much of the air can one or little demo can make? Obviously, for this room, it's not significant enough to make a difference. So we've tested our demo in the control setting. Let me go back to slides. And 
We put in a study where the typical example of 1,000 parts per million, where our system starts to work efficiently, gradually lowering to below 600 parts per million, where it stabilizes. And we estimated the output of our demo is actually equivalent to a small maple tree. So in a more practical setting, we develop a system of one meter square size. And give you an example, for a meeting room or conference room, we would need one to two, three systems, depending on ventilation rates and number of people, occupancy. The larger the room, the more systems we need. Because our biochips are scalable, we can make larger rooms for bigger uh, purposes. And we see numerous applications for this technology, such as fresh air and hope offices and making healthier homes. And of course, industrial setting where air quality is hugely important, such as hospitals. To start, we're targeting businesses, selling our custom systems as well as standard units. In addition to direct sales, we're partnering with distribution such as HVAC. And we have a great team of consultants and advisors. Um, of course, our professor who worked with at Stanford Bioengineering Department, Steve Quake, and also our partners, Excel Biotech and Edge Embossing, and as well as um, Tiny Innovation Solutions for product manufacturing, distribution, and logistics. And we're here to announce the launch of first generation of systems to commercial segment with forthcoming expansion to residential. We'd like to invite you to go to our website to sign up for more details and pre-orders. And please join us at Art Violi to transform the future of making fresh air indoors. Thank you. Great work, Art Violi. OK, any judge judges, your thoughts? So I have a question, just to get this right. So this, <laughs> this machine behind you, you put art on top of it, but behind it, there is an air filter that's essentially making cleaner air into your room. It's not actually a filter. It's right. Yeah, it's I biological. Right, right. But I, I'm, I'm making it right. And so, how many square feet does one of those do? Like thinking of an apartment, 800 square feet, 3,000 square feet, and what are you selling that for? And who are you selling it to? So the typical example of conference room 12 by 12. So that's what we need about one system. If the occupancy typically higher than, let's say, four to six people, then we do probably two systems. And that's a system? This is this not is a system. This is the demo. This is small. So the system is one meter square. So that's a typical standard unit. This is just the scaled down version. Yes. Okay, so you're talking about 240, 50 square feet. You might need two for six people in a room. Yes. And what does that sell for? Initially, it's going to be about a couple thousand, but with large-scale manufacturing, we're going to bring the unit economics down, then we're going to have the lower costs. And your initial sale is directly to the consumer? No. No. Initially, we're targeting commercial segments and then expanding it to residential afterwards. And selling it through what to commercial segments? We're selling it directly through our network as well as partnering with HVACs because they already have established channels. So HVACs, they take care of the systems, and since we're complement to the product, we complement to HVACs, they already have channels established. Got it. The okay. system takes in carbon dioxide and emits oxygen. Yes. But it doesn't do particle removing of uh, contaminants like at, that? At or this, right. At this point, it doesn't. We can probably include that later. But currently, there's nothing in the market that does that. Hmm. All the filtration systems Exactly right. what you're saying. They filter out the particulates, mm -hmm. but nothing exists that removes CO2 and converts it into oxygen. Can you tell us a little bit about what you think the demand is for something like this? I mean, it sounds pretty novel. People use yeah. plants to do this before, and we can't fit maple trees in our conference rooms. <laughs> so uh, what do you think the demand will be for this? Yes, yeah, so there's are huge new trends of making buildings healthier, not just green. Green means saving energy. Healthy means providing healthy environment. Currently today, most of the decision making is how can we save energy? How can we make this building efficient? And the new trend is not only making it efficient, but also making it healthy. Because by reducing the air that you're bringing from outside, you're actually keeping all the air in. And all this ties in with the demand control ventilation. 
because installing our systems locally, you don't have to bring the air so much over all the building, but locally you can take care of where the CO2 levels get elevated. But these buildings are, are, just for what it's worth, these buildings are already being built and they're being integrated in New York in brand new apartment buildings and they're called, what I forget the name of it, and that they're, they're doing it without these machines. It has to do with the way the building is built, that they're bringing in fre fresh air that's completely in internal, that they're doing it just in terms of the actual building of the building. I can't remember the names of them, but they're like- They're LEED certified buildings? Yeah. That's a separate class of buildings, and there are certain standards that all the buildings no, have to pass. No, they're actually yes. not LEED systems. No, they aren't yes. LEED buildings. They're called, oh, sorry, I can't remember. I want to call I want to call them safe houses, but that's not what they're called. <laughs> that's, um, that's cool, though. That's amazing. It is cool. I mean, I know because I'm building one right now, and it's completely fresh air all the time without a machine like this. And so in addition to providing fresh air, we're actually saving energy because our system doesn't use so much energy to bring air from outside. Yeah, neither do these buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So is it just all about the balance of oxygen to CO2? And if that's the case, could you, I mean, I've heard in different environments of people pushing oxygen into different environments, and, and I don't yep. know if that produces a comparable effect or not. Yes, yeah, so there are two things. CO2 concentrations high, that's the worse than lack of oxygen because we don't need as much oxygen that's in, in the okay. room. So oxygenators, that's the machines that inject the oxygen. In casinos, for example, they might inject some of the oxygen to keep people alert mm -hmm. and awake. But the core problem is actually CO2. Too much CO2. That's mm -hmm. what makes us sick. That's what makes us feeling tired. And, and as you think about um, trying to create demand and educating the public and these commercial folks that this is an opportunity, what, how, how, do you, how are you going to overcome that challenge? Because it sounds like awesome technology. I'm sure it's highly defensible. Mm -hmm. The fact yes. that there's a little algae in there, yes. that's pretty cool. But you've got to convince people that the CO2 is the problem. How do you, how do you execute that campaign? Um, it's, it's a great point because awareness is number one thing. Not everyone is aware, oh, I feel sick and the air is feeling stuffy, but that means CO2 is elevated. So dealing with buildings, the great point is that we have a support from a lot of research that other companies do. So we don't have to educate so much to say, okay, CO2 is bad for you. We can refer to the studies, for example, Harvard study that recently just published this paper on CO2 and cognitive performance. So relying on the knowledge and the foundation that industry has with them, working with them, partnering, we can show the ben benefits and the value of providing our product to the customer. Great, give it up for Art Violi.